now we are moving to the Werner's theory is over because there are some mistakes in the means there are some limitations for the Werner's theory. Now we are moving to the next theory of the coordination complexes that is valence bone theory. Okay, so according to valence bone theory, after valence bone theory, again different theories are there that is molecular orbital theory, crystal field theory. Okay, then the important theory regarding coordination complex that is valence bone theory. So according to valence bone theory, as we, as we discussed before, the metal ligand bone is formed by how? The ligand is sharing pair of electron to the vacant orbital of the metal atom. Okay, when these electron pairs from the ligand is sharing to the vacant orbital of the metal atom, they are forming the coordinate bone. Okay, so here we can say we have to know the features that what are the important postulates in the VBT. So, in order to create a coordinate covalent bones, the central metal atom makes available number of unoccupied orbitals. See, we have different types of ligands. So, as I said before, some ligands can donate only one pair of electron. Some of them are donating more than one pair of electron. That is two pairs of electron. Some of them are donating three pairs of electron. Some of them till six. Hexadendic ligand is there like uh, EDTA. So, whatever it is, the number of electron pairs coming from the ligand. So, that now same number of orbitals should be free in case of the metal atom to accept these electron pairs. Okay, suppose the in case of one complex, the cobalt that is surrounded by six ammonia molecule. So each ammonia can donate one pair of electron. As I said before, coordinate bone means here metal is not contributing any electron. Ligand is contributing both electron to the metal, right? So when the ligand is giving one pair of electron to the metal atom, the metal atom should have that vacant orbital to accept this pair of electron. Vacant orbital should be there. If it is one electron is there means they are not accepting. They are not able to accept pair of electron because one orbital can accommodate only one pair of electron. So if there is six ligands, these six ligands will share one, one, one pair. So six orbitals should be free in cobalt. Okay, so uh, S orbital may be free because all the six orbital will, may not be same. Okay, so different orbitals, see, S may be there, P may be there, D may be there. So before accepting these electrons, these different, different orbitals should be similar. How they become similar? That is hybridization. So before accepting electron pairs from the ligands, these vacant orbitals of the metal atom mix together, that is intermixing of orbital will take place. That is called hybridization and the hybrid orbital. Hybrid orbital means the orbital forming after hybridization is able to accept the pair of electron. Okay, so here we have different examples. So uh, suppose one chlorine, chloride ion, they can donate one pair of electron. See, carbonyl group, they can donate one pair of electron. Then fluorine, they can donate one pair of electron. NH3, water, they are all are donating one pair of electron to the metal atom. Okay, so these are different theories, the, the, uh, different postulates of this valence bone theory. Now we have to know how this compound is forming, how this bone is forming. Okay, so I am taking the compound FeCn6 4 minus and I will explain based on this one. Okay, so I have the complex FeCn6 4 minus. So first of all, we have to see the central metal atom. Here the central metal atom is iron and having the electronic configuration 3D6, 4S2. So in 3D6, 4S2, we can say this is the normal ground state electronic configuration of iron. Now we are going to find out the oxidation state of the metal in this complex. So I am taking the oxidation state as X for metal. So X plus, we have to know the charge of ligand, the sign means Cn minus ion have one minus charge, so charge is minus one. We have six Cn minus, so six into minus one. No other ligands are there. Summation of the charges inside the coordination sphere is equal to the total charge of the complex. So X plus six into minus one is equal to minus four. X minus six is equal to minus four. So X is equal to minus four plus six equal to plus two. So here iod is in plus 2 oxidation state. Now we are going to write the electronic configuration of Fp2 plus iod. So it will be 3d6. Two electrons are removing from the 4s orbital. 
Now we are coming to the complex. Before that, we have to draw the box notation. So here, Fe2 plus ion we have, and the Fe2 plus ion have the electronic configuration 3D6. Now, the box notation for the 3D6 configuration 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1 electron here. So we have 6 electrons in the 3D orbital. So next one, we have 6 Cn minus ligands, right? So each Cn minus ion, that is the ligands can donate one pair of electron. So in order to accept 6 pairs from 6 Cn minus ions, we need 6 vacant orbitals on this ion. But here, there is no orbitals in the 3D subshell. So we have to choose it from 4S and 4P. But before that, we have one more thing. We have to check the strength of the ligand. Here, the Cn minus, normally we have two types of ligands, strong field ligands and weak field ligands. Normally, Cn minus is a strong field ligand. Carbonyl group is a strong field ligand. Ammonia is a strong field ligand. Normally, weak field ligands are F minus, Cl minus like that. Halide ions are weak field ligands. Okay. So, when a Cn minus is a strong field ligand, so when a strong field ligand is approaching the metal atom, the electrons in the metal atom will undergo pairing. So after pairing of electrons in this metal atom, you will get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here two electrons are already there. And here the pairing, here the pairing. And now two orbitals are free in 3D. Now again we need four more orbitals because we have six Cn minus ions. So we choose from 1 from 4s and 3 from 4p. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 6 orbitals which are free. So these 6 orbitals will hybridize. They will mix together to get the uniformity. So here the hybridization is B2 sp3 hybridization. Okay. So in D2 sp3 hybridization, this complex having D2 sp3 hybridization. Okay. Now 1 Cn minus is coming. They are donating one pair here. Next one here. So each Cn minus will donate one one pair to the orbitals. So this is how this complex is forming. So here we can say the hybridization is D2 sp3. Now we are checking the magnetic property. So in this complex, all the electrons are paired means there is no unpaired electron. So they are diamagnetic in nature. Okay, next one here there is no electrons are unpaired means this is a low spin complex. If it is unpaired electrons are there, they will be high spin complex. Okay, so this is the balance bond theory. So this is one more thing is there here we are using 3D orbitals for hybridization. So they are called inner orbital complex. If they are using 4S, 4P, 4D, 4D is the outer orbital. So we will call them as outer orbital complex. So this is the difference between inner orbital complex and outer orbital complex. Okay. So from this valence bond theory, we are getting the magnetic property. So first one, we have to write the metal atom. Then we are finding out the oxidation state of the metal. Now we are writing the electronic configuration of the metal ion. Now we are drawing the box diagram. Now we have to check whether the ligand is strong or weak. If it is strong, the pairing of electron will take place. If it is weak, no pairing will take place. Now, when the ligand is coming, each ligand is donating one. Here it is one. If it is two also, no problem. Same way. So, we need the number of orbital will be free. That is equal to the number of ligands. So, if it is six is there, we have to choose six orbital. If 3D is free, we can choose it from 3D. Otherwise, we have to choose from 4S, 4P, 4D. If you are using 3D orbital, that is called inner orbital complex. If you are using 4D orbital, that is called outer orbital complex. If there is no unpaired electron, they are diamagnetic. If there is at least one unpaired electron, they are paramagnetic. These are the data we are getting from valence bone theory. Now, the magnetic properties of the coordination complexes. So, if you are coming to the magnetic properties, we discussed about this one the same way I explained. Diamagnetic means if there is no unpaired electrons, they are paramagnetic. If there is unpaired electrons, they are if there is unpaired electron, they are paramagnetic. If there is no unpaired electron, they are diamagnetic. Means all the electrons are paired means they are diamagnetic in nature. So diamagnetic means they are uh, repelling towards the magnetic field. Paramagnetic means they are attaching towards the magnetic field. This we will study 
you already studied in physics regarding magnetic properties, right? Okay, see, here there is no unpaired electron. So this is diamagnetic. Here there is unpaired electron. This is paramagnetic. Okay, so this is the difference between magnetic properties. Now the limitations of valence bond theory. So if you move to the limitations, as we discussed in case of Werner's theory, we have limitations, right? Same way, there are limitations in uh, valence bond theory also. First one, they are unable to explain the why powerful ligands can cause electron pairing. So we are saying Cn minus is a strong field ligand, so electron pairing is takes place. Why? Why this electron pairing is taking place in presence of a strong field ligand? It is not explaining here. Next one, coordination complexes mainly majority of, majority of them contains the transition metals. So they should be colored. But they are not explaining why these coordination complexes are colored. Color is there. Some complexes are yellow color, white, uh, red color, uh, blue color. But why this color is there? They are not explaining this color. They are only explaining magnetic property. Yeah, paramagnetic is there in their or outer orbit. That's all. It was unable to explain the reaction mechanism for reaction rate. Means they are not explaining anything regarding the kinetics. Means how fast the reaction is. If I change the medium, it, how it will affect the rate of the reaction. If you are explaining a theory, we have to explain everything. But here it is not explaining everything. Now, stability. Here they are not explaining the stability also. Means coordination compound is there. If it's stable or not. For that, we need the kinetic stability. Means kinetic theory. Means kinetics. It's not explaining here. That is the other problem regarding the valence bond theory. Okay, so after the failure of this balance bone theory, we have next theory regarding the coordination complexes that is called crystal field theory. So according to crystal field theory, comparing to the balance bone theory and other theory, crystal field theory is little bit good, means it is explaining many of these properties. So according to crystal field theory, the important thing is normally in case of the metal orbital, it means the com coordination complexes containing transition metal atom the metal atom is the transition element right so in case of transition elements if you consider the first transition series that is 3d series the electrons are filling in the 3d subshell so d subshell have five orbitals like this one so in case of this 3d subshell you can see these 3d subshells when these Ligands are approaching the metal atom. See, this is the free metal atom. They have normally low energy. But when this metal atom is approached by the ligand, the energy of this orbital will increase. So they will go into higher energy level. After that one, they will split into two sets of orbitals. That is, normally d orbitals means they are dxy, dy set dx set, dx square minus y square, d set square. This is the normal 5d orbitals. So when these three orbitals are together called d2g orbital and these two orbitals are together called eg orbitals. So when the splitting of orbital taking place, here you can see in case of these complexes, here, when the ligand is approaching this metal atom, this is the normal metal atom, 5 orbital. But during the approach of these ligands, the energy of this orbital is increasing into here. This is the normal one. This is after the approach. After getting into the higher energy level, they will split into two sets again, that is T2G and EG. So, if you are considering the octahedral complexes, the EG orbital will have higher energy and this one will have lower energy. The difference between them is normally called delta O. Here, this is called, this is happening in case of crystal field stabilized theory. Okay, so now first of all, these orbitals were degenerate. Degenerate means they have similar energy. But after the approach, they are losing their degeneracy. They are converting into two different energy levels. That is crystal field splitting. Now, what is the, see here, what is the use of this crystal field splitting? So, we find the repulsion between the electrons. Why this splitting is taking place? In case of the metal, the d orbitals are there. Already electrons are there. During the approach of the ligands, they are accepting more electrons. So, electrons are there in the metal atom and electrons are there in the ligand. So, these electrons will repel together. That's why 
these orbitals are splitting into two sets means their energy is increasing repulsion means their energy is increasing and they are splitting so here these orbitals along the axis c if you consider an octahedral complex you can see metal atom is surrounded by six ligands like this right so i am considering six ligands here why this splitting is taking place like this why the t2g orbitals are not getting high energy yeah see here normally we have three axes x y z right x y z if you consider the same axis in this complex we can say these two ligands are in x axis now these two ligands are in z axis and these two ligands are in y axis okay so in case of this complex normally what is the geometry of the orbitals that is phi d orbitals d x y orbital means they are between the axis right so d x y orbital means this is x axis this is y axis this is d x y axis orbital then i am writing d y z orbital d y z orbital means this one now what is d x z orbital this is x z orbital then x square minus y square means they are along the axis this is x this is y d z square is again along the axis okay so here you can see these x y y z x z these three are t2g orbital they are between the axis right so in this complex we can see all the ligands are approaching through the axis that's why i said here the ligands are along the axis only so when these ligands are coming through the axis the orbital which is lying along the axis will suffer more repulsion why the repulsion the electrons in the orbital and the electrons of the ligand or the charge negative charge of the ligand so when these ligands are approaching along the axis the orbital which is lying along the axis will have more repulsion so they will get more energy what are the orbitals lying along the axis they are d z square and d x square minus y square that is e g orbital so e g orbitals will get high energy at the same time other three orbitals d x y d y z d x z orbitals they are lying between the axis they are comparatively they are suffering less repulsion so they have less energy comparing to the e g orbital so which are the orbitals lying between the axis d x y d y z d x z so they will lie below between the axis means they have less energy than that of the e g orbital that's why they are splitting into two sets t2g and e g see if you consider the tetrahedral complexes it is opposite because in tetrahedral complexes the shape is like the metal is here this is the tetrahedra so here all the ligands are coming between the axis so the orbitals lying between the axis will suffer more repulsion so they are d x y d x z because in octahedra all the ligands are coming through the axis but here the ligands are coming between the axis so the orbitals lying between the axis will suffer high repulsion they will have more energy so d x y d y z d x z will have more energy d x square minus y square and d z square will have low energy so this is the difference between the splitting in octahedral complexes and tetrahedral complexes okay next one in the vbt they were not explaining the color of the coordination compounds right but in crystal field theory they are explaining the color so according to crystal field theory the color of the complex is due to see here we know that due to the approach of the ligands the orbitals if you consider the octahedra they are splitting into t2g and eg right t2g have low energy eg have high energy so what will happen the color of the complex is due to when the electrons in the lower energy level is getting some energy from the electromagnetic spectra they will absorb the energy absorb the energy means they are getting more energy so they are not able to stay in this low energy level so they will jump into the higher energy level but they are not stable in that higher energy level because their proper place is the lower energy level so they will come back when they come back they will liberate that absorbed energy that is the reason for the color of the complex so when these electrons from the lower energy level that is t2g in case of octahedral absorb energy 
they will excite into higher energy level so when they come back they will release that excess energy that is that's why they are looking colored in nature okay so this theory we cannot explain on the basis of valence bond theory because they are not explaining the splitting here only they are explaining the splitting so here electrons absorb energy and move from lower energy to higher energy the compounds appears colored because they moving from low to high but at the high energy level they are not stable they will come back by emitting some energy that is the energy now what is the limitations of crystal field theory so crystal field theory also has some limitation that's why motk that is molecular orbital theory so first one they are structures colors magnetic properties of coordination compounds are well explained by the crystal field model however it follows that anionic ligand should have the strongest splitting effect based on the supposition that the ligands are point charges so in this one in this cft the ligands are considered as a single point charge that's why they are explaining all these things okay next one the anionic ligands are located near the bottom of the spectrochemical series spectrochemical series means as i said the some ligands are strong some ligands are weak so all these ligands can be arranged on the basis of their strength that is called spectrochemical ligands a spectrochemical series so uh, shortcoming cft are discussed in molecular orbital theory which i'll say the okay so here we no need to study about mot lft uh, the crystal field theory is enough so there is a more described one form of this crystal field theory that is lft ligand field theory and mot that is giving a proper explanation for all these things okay so comparing to bbt cft is better they are giving proper explanations